We're finally ready to rig this. So if you've never used an armature or rigging before, this is going to be a very simple tutorial to introduce you to it. I'm not going to try and go into extensive detail. This is basic usage. So just come into the front. I want to move our box so it's basically sitting right on top of the ground plane at zero along the Z axis. Come back into the front. Let's come over into a wireframe view. In fact, I'm going to turn off subdivision so we're not having to see that. Option Z so we can see pass through, X-ray as they call it. I'd really like our primary object that's in this package die collection to be an original piece of data. And I want to apply the armature to a duplicate of that. So we're going to call this final product box. And I'm going to come up to the object menu and we're going to come down to a duplicate linked. Press the escape key so it doesn't move it. And I'm going to move that into the main scene. So that we have the, this original and we're going to tie the armature to the duplicate. Come back up to add and we're going to add an armature to the scene. By default, it's going to give us a single bone. So let's come down here and assign this to nine inches. And that's going to be our starting point. If we look at this from the left view, it's aligned to sort of, you can think of the backbone of our object, which is great. That's kind of what we want. Press the tab key with the armature selected, and now we can come in and adjust the beginning or end point of the bone. And I'd like to zoom down a little bit closer and then get this right to the fold point of the lid. Press the G key with that Z key to constrain to Z only movement, and I'm going to move that right to about there. So it's right at the fold point of the back. In fact, I could come to the left, <laughs> left view, G key, and I could move that even closer, sort of the center of that collection of fold geometry. So this is going to be the root bone. Let's name this. And the way you name it is by invoking a function key. So we're going to press the F2 key, and I'm going to call this the root bone. And when we expand over here, we can see under armature, it says root. Okay, so let's come back into the front view, and let's draw another bone from this position up that's going to function for the flap. So with this, the top of the first root bone selected, press the E key, and then we can extrude up a new bone, press the Z key, and click right there. Come to the side view, and we're going to press the E key again to draw a bone for the top flap. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more closely, and we're in edit mode. So this is where we change the positions and points of our armature and the bones and we also can create new bones. So I'm going to press the G key here and get that a little bit more close to that corner bendy point. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to create two bones for the flaps over here. And when we look at the armature so far, we've created two bones that have been attached to the root. So the first one that we're going to attach right here is going to be for the top flap. Now, early on, if I press the tab key to go back into object mode, I'm going to select our package design box right here, and we're going to come back down to its object data properties, and we're going to look back at these collections that we've created. And we're going to note that these are named in such a way that the armature is going to be able to use this vertex collection data, this vertex groups data. So if we look at lid top, that's what we want to name the bone that corresponds to that collection of vertices. So I'm going to double click this and I'm going to actually copy that exact name. Tab to leave edit mode. I'm going to select the armature again and we're going to come back here into edit mode and I'm going to take this bone that we're working on, press F2 and we're going to name that exactly the same name that we have as assigned to the vertex group for that top lid. That's very important that they're named exactly the same thing. Okay, let's come back here. I'm going to select flap top, copy that, tab to go into edit mode for the armature, select this top bone, function two, 
and then paste in that name. Okay, so let's do this now. Let's come in and add a bone for these two flaps. The way that we're going to do this instead of extruding it is we're just going to place these bones and what I want to do is to come over here and place my cursor at that location. So let's say that you want that cursor to be exactly on the vertex right there. We can come up and turn on snapping, make sure we're in vertex mode, and then we're in the cursor tool, so you can just grab that and snap it right there into position exactly on that vertex. Turn off snapping, and then we can create a new bone in that location. Press Shift A, which is the same as simply coming up to the Add menu here, remembering that we're in edit mode. And I want to bring that to your attention because this can be a little bit confusing. Bones have two modes. They have edit mode and they have pose mode. So we're in edit mode, which is where you create and scale and change the bones in the rest position that you want them to be. So we're going to add a single bone. It's going to be enormous. That's okay. Scale, zoom out, press the S key, we're going to scale that way down. And then we're going to come into the front view. Let's turn on X-ray mode. And I want to rotate this. You could rotate it or you could simply move the end of the bone right there. It's really going to accomplish the same thing. So if I come over here and rotate this, I can rotate that down by 90 degrees. Or I simply could have moved the end point kind of six of one half dozen of another in this case. I want to move the end point so it matches up with the end of the flap. So I'll press the G key and then X to move only along the X axis there. And then that matches up the bone with the flap. In this particular case, we want to name the bone. So let's select the bone and we want to make sure and name it the same as we have the vertex group for the flap. That's very, very important. Press function to and we're going to call this flap space dot space right. And we can double check those later, but it should be exactly the same. Let's come back into the front view and I want to duplicate this bone. We're going to bring up the context menu and then we're simply going to duplicate it. Press the X key to move it along just the X axis. There you can see we've moved it to match up to the other bone. In this case, I'm going to press Shift S and we're going to move the cursor to selected so it's in the middle. Then we can bring up the context menu and do a mirror local X to flip its direction. Then press function 2 and we're going to name this left. There we go. Okay, so lid.top, flap.top, and then these are independent. You can see the hierarchy here is these are sort of free floating bones. So this bottom bone is not, it's going to be stationary. It's not going to be attached to any vertices. The next thing that we need to do is actually establish a relationship between the mesh that we're wanting to deform and the armature. Let's come up here and turn off the empty for this original die package that we're working with that we've been modeling so far. We've created a duplicate. We don't want it to attach to the original. So I'm going to turn off the collection, leaving in place just the duplicate that we've put here. So you select the box and then you hold the shift key and select the armature. Press command P or control P on the PC. And then you do an armature deform with empty groups. That's very important. What that will do is it will create vertex groups on the target mesh with names that match exactly to the bones that we've named. But since we already created these vertex groups, it looks at that and says, ah, those match the names of the bones. I'm going to automatically attach the two. Okay. So that's why, that's why it's very important to make sure that you've named that you've named everything. But it did put a root down here because we didn't previously have root. Okay, so let's come in now back to the armature and we can test this out. So we're going to come now into pose mode. And what I want to do is select the bone that we want to test. And you can see that it's going to go to the location of the cursor, the, the widget is for deforming. So I'm going to press Shift S and I'm going to do a cursor to active. The root 
of the bone is the active location. And now I can take this, ta-da, and I can deform that. And we can do the same thing up here. Shift S, cursor to active, and then we can deform that. And we could do the same thing over here. So that is how you do that. Shift S, cursor to active, and then we could open these up and animate these. So the great thing about this is it's a pretty simple workflow. We're not needing to do anything extensive by adding IK chains and doing anything more sophisticated than this.